Hi folks, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics. Transvariance is the first paper of the Ethereal Mechanics series and this is the third video of the Transvariance video series. And we're going to discuss emission and time. If you are watching this for the very first time, it's better that you start this from the beginning. There's a playlist on the Ethereal Mechanics YouTube page for transvariance and you can watch the videos in order. There'll be a link in the low bar. I recommend you go do that now. If you start in the middle, it's not going to make any sense. This is the itinerary of the video series. I'm not going to read this to you. There are uh, no changes to this at the moment, but this could change. So let's get back to the simulation where we left off before. And just to establish where we left off before, I'm going to run this simulation again. Again, we're launching in the, the pulse of light in the X direction. It's going to get split by the mirror. This one turns red when it reflects, just so we can tr keep track of which pulse of light is which. And that, the red's just a copy of the one that goes through the mirror and one that gets reflected by the mirror. Okay, so the interesting things I want to record here, just to remind you of, is that the universal time is 22 0.538 uh, units of time because we're, we're adding one to round this up. This should be 21.5. So we're adding one thousandth to each one to round them up to what would be the correct time. And the time dilated time, the time of the train, T, is 21 and a half time units. Okay, now let's run this simulation and let's run this simulation in reverse. Instead of launching uh, in the X direction, we're going to launch from where the pulses end up into the Y direction. So we're going to run this essentially in reverse. Oh, look at that. We're going to miss the mirror completely. And so this brings up another transvariance that we need. Now, when I first rationalized this all out, that was going to be the steering transvariance for light sources. And then later on, I realized there needed to be a emission for electrostatic sources as well, but it turned out these turned out to be the same thing. So in the simulator, whether you put steering transvariance or emission transvariance, you get the same damn thing. So we're, we're basically going to refer all these to the more primordial one, which is emission transvariance. And we're going to explain what emission transvariance is uh, in a few slides down. So let's run this again. So this means when fields are emitted from a source, whether it be a light source, electrostatic source, magnetic source, the fields are going to transvariate if they are moving. And this is how we would compensate for the Michelson-Morley experiment to exercise the gift. Now, the thing we want to look at right now is the fact that instead of taking a second and a half too long like the X did, this took a second and a half too short. Hmm, very interesting. Well, let's put this simulation off to the side and continue on here. So if we add up the universal time, obviously there's going to be, a t uh, and take the average, it's going to be a mismatch. But now if we take the time dilated, the train time, and we add the X launched time and the Y launched time, the average is 20. And this is how we match the stationary time. And that makes sense because if you have a light pulse traveling to the right or to the left, you're going to get a different transition time of the train. So there's no way that they can say the, the speed of light is the same to all observers in all reference frame. That is completely bogus. What you have is, is that if you have an experiment that measures the speed of light, it is going to get the same answer whether you're on the train is translating or whether the train is standing still. But because you can only measure light in a closed loop, in other words, you have to have it go forwards and backwards, that's how you're going to get the same time. And this may be one of the Achilles heels. And we're going to discuss the Achilles heels of the gift in a later video. Just keep this in mind. But this brings up an interesting question. Oh, before I get to the interesting question, just let you know, the cause of time dilation is explained in the electrogravity series. It is a local effect, and it is completely governed by Newtonian mechanics. It's not voodoo. It's not, you know, spooky action at a distance. It's a simple local effect. The, the 
The link for the electrogravity series will be in the low bar. Okay, but this issue of forwards and backwards needed to get the correct measurement of time opens up a rabbit hole. Because if the gift is two-way compensated scheme, then logically, if emissions have a transvariation, then so too should coupling, which is something I had not really considered before. But after I had thought about it, looked around, I said, oh man, this is obvious. And this is new material that is not found in the paper. So this is brand new material. The place I found it is in the Doppler effect. Okay, considering a train that's stationary, and there's three observers. You have a lineman that's working on a post ahead of the train. You have a lineman that's working on a post behind the train. And you have the conductor in the train. When the, when the, when the whistle of the train sounds, they all hear the same pitch. Okay, now, when the train is in motion, okay, the, uh, the lineman ahead of the train is going to hear the sound of the whistle compressed, a higher pitch. The lineman that's behind the train is going to hear the sound of the whistle lower, the lower pitch, which proves that emission sources have to uh, have transvariation. Okay, now if we look behind the train, we have both the conductor and the lineman are, are exposed to the same lower pitch tone of the train. But because the lineman's standing still, he hears a lower pitch, but because the conductor is moving with the train, he hears the normal pitch of the train. And this shows you that coupling has to have a transvariation as well. Okay, and this is, this is very opening because it's opening up other kinds of doors and rabbit holes for other things that I had not yet considered before. Okay, when you look at the Ethereal Mechanics simulation software, one of the things you're going to notice is that we have for our transvariations, we have one for emission but not for coupling. Obviously now this has to be updated for that. But let me show you the what is more formally known as the emission coupling. So we go under emission, stationary, and what these are, this simulates the emission from a field source. This could be like a Coulomb field from an electron. And the field lines are being emitted off uniformly in all directions. The, these red ones are painted red just for reference purposes. They're the ones that would be normally on the cardinal axes. Now, if we put this simulation in motion, okay, these field lines now are going to be bent. And that would give the false illusion. No, so, sorry, wrong way to say that. That would allow a person observing an electron to know that they're in motion because the field lines of the electron would be distorted because of the motion relative to the medium. And that is one of the reasons why we have to have emission transvariance to compensate for that. Now you can see the field lines do come off. They're, they're Doppler shifted. Notice it has kind of the same effect as the Doppler effect. Okay, but at the very least, they do come off in the proper. So if you are the person on the train watching this, you will not know that the field lines are being compressed because you're going to have a coupling thing that's going to compensate for that. And that's what we have to compensate for. That was one of the missing pieces of this. Um, this is very exciting, to say the least. So in any event, that is the transver that's transvariant emission. And now we're going to have the compensating effect, which would be transvariant coupling. That is new material. So if you want to help out, or if you want to see the transvariant paper, you go to the, the website, distinti.com. You go to the Ethereal Mechanics link here. The, on that page, you're going to find the link to the transvariant paper. Okay, if you want to help support this work, you go to the this link here that will take you to the Patreon site. We also have a blog site. And if you want to see why this work is important, you just click either this or this, and that will show you why uh, we have something much bigger than climate change is our problem. Again, this is just the links in... Um, if you want to type them in yourselves, thank you. No more voodoo physics.